right, so today we are going to talk about the Middle Ages, a time period between the 5th and 15th century AD in Europe. It's also known as the Medieval Period and the Dark Ages, so you are familiar with this. Now the reason why we come to the Middle Ages is because eventually the Holy Roman Empire, which grew so great, collapsed, and it collapsed because of the lack of communication and lack of um, protection from foreign invaders. But also what happened when it collapsed is it led to social chaos and trade and economic collapse. Now with that, all of, this, all of the territories within the Holy Roman Empire just kind of broke off and you had small kingdoms that were really trying to regroup and, and revamp their government and their economic stability, and they could not gather or muster that ability, and they were struggling to survive. Now, the reason that it's called the, the Dark Ages is because at the same time, it, it was the loss of Greek and Roman culture and achievements. Now, the reason being is because once the Holy Roman Empire collapsed, Every achievement that they had created, the people did not feel as though it was important to keep up. So the aqueducts had gotten destroyed. The roads were destroyed and left alone, which were lost because of it. The governments, the ideas of the governments were lost as well. Not to mention their artwork, their sculptures, their writings. Everything was lost because nobody really paid attention to it anymore and did not find it interesting. Now, how did we bring the Middle Ages or how were we able to reorganize the Middle Ages or how was the Middle Ages able to reorganize? Well, that was because of a leader called Charlemagne. He was the leader of the Franks in the Germanic region. And he saw this social chaos that was happening between all of the small kingdoms, and he knew that something had to be done if there was to be survival. And so what he decided to do was he decided to try and unite these kingdoms, which he successfully did. But the way he did it was not only with promising protection and understanding trade economics, but what he also did was he also worked or partnered up with the Pope who was a huge influence not only in the Holy Roman Empire but also in these small kingdoms because that was the faith at the time. The Catholic Church was the strongest faith at the time within Western Europe. And with that, he partnered with the Pope to strengthen the unity of the kingdom because he understood that if he had their faith behind them and helping them or believe that they were helping them, then they would unify even more. Now, when Charlemagne was not, this was not the only thing that Charlemagne did. The other thing that he did is he created an entire new social structure that would also help unify the kingdom. And this social structure was called feudalism. Now, with feudalism, you have a king and the pope, of course, to the side. They kind of partnered up together. Then you had the lords, the vassals, or the knights, and the serfs. Now, all of this was basically an I scratch your back, you scratch my back, I help you out, you help me out kind of social structure. Because what would happen is the king would, would give his money, his land, and his protection to the lords. The lords would then give money and protection to the knights or to the vassals so that they would help with the lords and lead their armies. And then the knights would again break down their lands and give protection to the serfs and the peasants. So basically, if you work my land for you, I promise protection to you. If you, when we're talking about the knights and the vassals, if you lead my army, here is money and I give you land. And with the king, because you give me loyalty, because you give me protection and you serve me, I will give you money and land. Now, all of this is a circle structure, too, because what happens is then the serfs give military. They become an army when invaded and when needed. So they give military, they farm the lands for food, 
and they give loyalty to not only the, the, their knights, but to the lords and to their king. Now the same with the knights is they have mili they are military protectors and or military protection and loyalty and they give it to their lords and the lords again give money and army and loyalty to the king. So it's a full-fledged social structure or social circle that this is going to work with. Now, as long as feudal system lasted, it eventually failed. The feudal system lasted up until about 1450 AD, and we still see some traces of it for a long time afterwards, but this structure is nowhere near what it used to be during the Middle Ages. Once um, the Renaissance period, which we talk about, sets in, this is not a factor anymore, and you, but you still have kings, lords, knights, and peasants, but we'll get to that later on. The reasons why it comes to an end in the 15th century, well, because there were new trade options that had opened up. There was another black plague that had, that, or another plague outbreak in Europe that had killed, again, thousands and thousands of people. Feudalism becomes very unpopular. People are not liking the whole structure. They saw it very unfair and were breaking away. This was where the peasants' revolt came in, and they were moving from the Lord's lands to the villages, and they were finding jobs in the villages or creating their own jobs in the villages, villages instead of serving on the Lord's land. And then, after this all started, the king started to create more of a centralized government that we begin to see in the colonial period, in the Renaissance period, as we will continue on with, with all of these discussions throughout the year.